worship with us if you will go ahead and bow your heads with me father god thank you for this day thank you for this family this facility just being here so that we can come and recharge ourselves for this next week father be with the team that we have going to do like this week that are leaving today be with them lord i ask you to just wrap them tightly in your arms on their journey down and give them the strength and the energy and the knowledge to do the work that they're going to do for you, Lord. We're so proud to have them go and do that. Bring them home safely to us. The rest of us, Lord, be with us this week. Help us shine here in this community. Let them know that they are loved through the things that we say and do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
She's out of the office this week. I'm out of the office this week. And what are the chances that Charlotte and uh, Linda would all, we'd all be out this week? <laughs> so the office is closed, friends, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And we will have someone answering phones on Thursday. Um, but, uh, yeah, be patient with your staff this week and out next week as we catch up. Appreciate that. And also for your prayers for all that safe travel. Has God been moving in your life this week? What do you have to give thanks for that we can share in? Yes. surgery to remove some cancer cells on his head and his face and uh, I think they did a stellar job and we've got one heck of a nurse maid here who's uh, nursing him back to health. Yes, and Susan, you had a wonderful trip. I did. Uh, the babies are awesome. They are progressing quite well and the babies can hold two little tiny boys. We're going to watch them grow. Sweet little twins. And I'm not sure if they're going Yes. Good, yes, sometimes it's good to be able to say the end to a day or a week so that you know that, you know, God will give a new one when you wake up the next day or next Monday. And what about our prayers? What concerns do we have that we need to lift up? Tom's continued healing. What else? My brother Okay, so for Kevin and his chemo treatment. This coming Thursday.
you didn't see any reason to worry about it. Um, and every, otherwise, everything was going well for the babies. A joy and a relief. Yes. Yes. And uh, your prayers matter as they help us through those those uh, valleys that we travel. Absolutely. I don't like to put myself in the spotlight for prayer very often, but I started physical therapy on my foot this week. Um, well, I'm not going to draw attention to my stupid sock, but yes. So I have several things that I'm trying to do to get over my plantar fasciitis, and also um, I've had edema ever since I broke my foot. It's almost like where that, where the edge of that foot <coughs> fell on my foot, like the, the veins aren't communicating with each other, and the it pulls right at my toes. Anyway, more information than you need, but... Um, We'll see. You know, I have a mission this week, so I can't go to physical therapy. And then I'm away from my spiritual renewal at the end of July, so I won't be going there. But that I can keep up with the stretches and that the time I can spend there will make a difference. Because I sure uh, would like to get rid of the 10 pounds I gained when I broke my foot. <laughs> and get back active and all of those things. That matters to me. All right. Let's bow our heads up. Lord, we have so much for which to be thankful. We thank you for the, the praise reports that we've heard. Uh, Melissa's dad, and uh, oh my gosh, how far he's come. And in the time that he has, that he wasn't sure he would, he would get, that he is uh, living it so well into the fullest. Lord, we lift to you Denise's praise, and we are so grateful that uh, she and baby are still healthy and we pray that that baby will wait and come when it's time because you will know the right time we're just uh, like we said so grateful that they're out of the woods for the moment and lord i i do lift to you uh, praise for those who have traveled and have come safely home whether they've been away on business or pleasure or visiting brand new babies lord um, we know that those uh those times away, they, they renew us and they give us new perspective as well. Lord, we pray for those who will be traveling in the coming week or so. Uh, for whatever reason they travel, Lord, put your hedge of protection around them. Get them safely where they're going and uh, safely back home again. Lord, we lift heaven to you and his uh, treatments as he is going through uh, his chemotherapy. Lord, we lift Esther to you, and we just ask that you would calm her fears, uh, that you would give her confidence in her doctors, but most of all, remind her every day how much she trusts you, and uh, that's what's going to keep her going. Lord, we ask for successful surgery and uh, a quick and complete healing in her, and we thank you for her family that's so supportive, and we'll be there with her all the way. Lord, we lift uh, Shannon's family to you, and we just ask that in the wake of this tragedy, that uh, you would remind them that uh, you are peace which passes all understanding, and in you is the hope of life eternal. And Lord, I just ask that you would just wrap them in your loving arms these days. Lord, I lift Tom to you, and I ask that you would continue to be in his healing. So grateful that a uh, competent surgeon was able to take care of his need as well. Lord, for all of these prayer concerns and joys, and for those that I've either neglected to mention or we haven't said out loud, Lord, we lift them to you, knowing that you hear our prayers, make us whole, and one in the body of Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Right, so this week, we have only two more weeks of questions left, and uh, the question for this week is, what is God's purpose for me? And uh, there was more than one person who asked this question, and I do think it's one of those basic meaning of life questions that every self-aware human being asks themselves at some point in their lives. Why am I here? You know, what is the purpose 
of this life, or even, you know, my life in this world? What is, what is the reason for our being? I probably prayed harder about this question because, you know, every person might have a different reason they're asking that question. But um, let me share with you the scriptures I've chosen and kind of lead you in to where God's been leading me this week. So I'm going to start in uh, John chapter 10. Okay, John chapter 10, I'm going to start at verse 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord, and I have power to lay it down again, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. And then in Matthew, just a couple of short verses. Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, the word that I need to hear today more than any other is a word from you. It is your word that I seek. It's your word that I need to hear. It is your word that I need to bear. May your word be made flesh in me and us today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, when I was asked the question, what is God's purpose for me in May, I had flashbacks to many years as a campus minister because young people are being asked all the time, what are you going to do with your life? What are you going to study in? What are you going to major? What, what's your career going to be? What are you going to do with this one life that you're given? And so I was a career counselor in addition to a, a college minister, campus minister, and um, so often the questions became so narrow. So the student would come to me and they would say, should I be a teacher or a nurse? Or should I be an engineer or a, a professor? You know, or it, would, it might even come down to, what should I do in my summer job? Should I be a camp counselor or should I take an internship? And for some reason, we've come to believe that God has a firm, strong opinion about every single tiny little choice that we have to make in our lives. Now, I'm not going to bash people who pray and ask God for direction and discernment, because I have to do the same thing in my life every day. Only I don't know which choices are the ones that are going to turn maybe even the path of my life or make a difference in others' lives. Very well. I don't know which ones those are going to be, so I do need to continue to pray about each of those choices. But what I want to point out is that when everything we pray to God has to do with what I'm going to do, or what my life is going to look like, or the choice that I have to make, really, are we kind of praying to the mirror? It's a very narcissistic thing to do to say, well, God, you know, everything I do, that matters the most. You hear what I'm saying? So, so I think that when we approach the question, what is God's purpose for me, it needs to be more than how do I pray to God 
and get an answer about this, this one question that I need to figure out this way or that way, or yes or no, or right or left. It's more than that. It's so much more than that, that the scripture I was drawn to had to do with Jesus the shepherd, the one who we're called to follow. How many people did Jesus go to, and not just the disciples? And he went right up to them, and he looked them in the eye, and he said, follow me. In this instance that I read, he was saying that to Matthew, who was at the time Levi, the tax collector, right? Do you, know, do you remember what Matthew did? He was one of the remarkable disciples, because so many had questions or had to make arrangements, um, and yet he got up and he followed Jesus. That's the only thing it says in the scripture. He was guaranteed to lose his livelihood by standing up and walking out of the tax collector's office. But he did it. And he didn't know where he was going yet. And he probably had second thoughts. He was wondering, what the heck did I just do? And yet, when you don't show up for work the next day, the damage is done, isn't it? Your boss doesn't, I mean, unless, unless you have a great boss, your boss probably doesn't call you and ask you if you're ill. They find somebody else to fill in for the job, right? And not only that, he was a tax collector. So uh, there aren't very many people out there willing to help him out, given his former occupation. I think there is one purpose that God wants for all our lives. There is one main purpose. He wants you to follow him. He wants you to choose him. He wants you to keep your eyes on him. And he wants you to follow him all of your days for the rest of your life. He wants you to accept him as your shepherd. He wants you to listen for his voice. He wants you to know him so well. He wants you to steep yourself in his stories and in his words and in his prayers for you. And he wants you to know him so well that when he speaks, you know that it's him. Now, I'm not exactly there yet because, like I said, I'm always double-guessing myself and wondering, did I hear God, or am I hearing what I want God to say? We talked about that a few weeks ago. I'm still asking myself those questions. I think it's important not to assume that just because it popped in my head that it's from God. But the more, the more you know Him, the closer you get to Him, the tighter your relationship is with Him, the more likely it is that you are following your, His purpose for your life. Now, it may be that there may be something or maybe someone you need to walk away from. Do you remember the one that Jesus said, follow me? And they said, hold on, i got to go bury my mother or father. I can't remember which parent. I have to go bury my father. And he said, let the dead bury the dead. Come on. Now's the time. Follow me. And you remember when the rich man came and he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? That was also in Matthew. And, uh, and Jesus said, well, what is, what is in, written in the law and commandments? And he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And he said, do this. And the man said, but, but, and Jesus said, you got to sell what you have. you gotta, you got to leave it behind. How many of us come to Jesus and say, well, should I get rid of this, or should I get rid of this to follow you? <laughs> I know this is kind of dragging me down, and this is kind of holding me back. Which one do you want me to give up? And Jesus says, it's not about you. <laughs> it's not about what you have. It's about following me. And so if you're having that question, if there's something that you need to let go of, the answer is probably yes to both, or yes to all. I think um, I, I do need to say a few words about spiritual gifts. Because so often when we teach people how to be church, instead of teaching them how to be the body of Christ, be the church, we teach them how to do church. We tell them to do church, you gotta worship, you gotta go to Sunday school, I don't know, fill in the blanks, you need to tithe, or at least 
give what you can until you can work out a tithe. So we have a list of things that you need to do to do church. Being church is something different. That's also following Christ, following his call as a body into the world, into the neighborhood where you are, becoming God in the flesh, just like Jesus did, and walking around the neighborhood and healing and blessing and, uh, and asking others to follow our Lord as well. Often when people come and want to learn how to do church, we put their skills into action. Or they may have some raw talent that, uh, that we, you know, put, plug into the praise band or into the choir. But I want to say something about spiritual gifts, because they're not always in line with your talents and skills. And I think this is very in line with following Jesus. If you follow him like Matthew did, you're not quite sure where you're going, but you got your eyes on the prize. And you remember that God doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called, right? And so that's the way the spiritual gifts work. They are the grace of God at work in us. So if you're comfortable where you are in the church, then uh, stand up and follow Jesus into the grace that can work in you. Because if God's grace is working in you, it's getting under your skin a little bit. You have to call someone and ask them to pray for you because you're not quite sure yet about where God is leading you. Spiritual gifts empower us to match our deep passions with the needs, the deep needs of the world. Let me say that again. Our, our spiritual gifts help us to match our deep passions with the deep needs of the world. And so, by all means, we need to worship. But if that pew is comfortable, and when you leave, you think, oh, well, I'll come and do church again next week. Be the church every day, where, everywhere you are, in your family, in the world, in the places you work. That is where God needs you to be the church for the sake of others. And let him grow the gifts in you that need to be there in order for you to be. God's flesh for someone else. These gifts are given to individuals, but they are given not because you need to be lifted up, but they're given to build and strengthen community and meet the needs of people around us, people in the church, people outside the church, people down the road, people around the world, because we do help in many, many ways. We have such a connectional church. Really, for me, it comes down to uh, Wesley's covenant prayer. And a part of that prayer, which sinks deep in my heart, is let me be used for thee, or let me be laid aside for thee. Let me be all things, let me be nothing. If what I need to do is take, take a, a place on the sideline and cheer someone else on, or to lift them up, or to help them find their gifts, that reminds me that I am I'm following the one who lifted us all up, who, who reached down into the pit and lifted us out of our sin and offers us that opportunity every day to be able to look at him, gaze on him, and follow him. So what is the purpose of your life? Follow Jesus. Be his, be his sheep. Allow him to shepherd you where you need to go. Even if you're not sure quite where that's going to be. And remember that there's a whole flock trying to do the same thing. And we encourage each other on the way. Let us pray. Our Lord God, we often have no idea where we are going. It's hard to see the road ahead of us, and we cannot know for certain where it will end. Nor do we really know ourselves, and the fact that we think we're following your will does not mean that we're actually doing so. But we believe 
that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope that we have that desire in all we are doing. I hope that we will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead us by the right road, though we may know nothing about it before we get there. So we trust you. Always we trust you. Though we may seem lost and sometimes we glimpse the shadow of death, we will not fear, for you are ever with us, and you will never leave us to face our perils alone. In Jesus' name. There's no membership requirement or age requirement. This is the Lord's table. And so I hope that if you are present in this place that you will feel welcome. I also hope that if you're not sure about it or if you feel any kind of pressure that you won't because if you decide to sit and pray for those who are taking, that you won't be judged for not coming forward either. We, this is open in every sense of the word. And um, it's just our way of being able to, to come to Christ and uh, to uh, take him into ourselves one more time and remind ourselves who it is we want to be Lord over our lives. Let's pray. Lord, we lift up our hearts to you and we give thanks to you because it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty. You are creator of heaven and earth. We are your people on earth, and we are joined by all the company of heaven. We praise your name, and we rejoice in the many ways in which you have shown us uh, your love and sacrifice through the history in our lives. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, in the confidence of the children of God, let us pray as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, power, and the 
glory forever. There is one loaf, and Jesus was perfect. When he sacrificed himself, he made himself broken, that we might be made whole through him. And the cup which we share is a pouring out of God's love for us. We will take by intinction today, which means I'll hand you a piece of bread, and you'll dip it in the cup, if you wish, before uh, you put it in your mouth. opportunity for us to bring forward our gifts, our tithes and our offerings, offering plates on the altar. Let's join the grace.
essential to transform not only your life, but the whole world is what he came for, all the lives around you. Um, I have asked if, um, if Donna would have a prayer over me. Uh, I'm the only member of the mission team who's here this morning, and we'll have a bigger prayer at the second service. But um, can this be our benediction? Would that be all right? 